from my experience as a peace builder, I think inclusion and collaboration around the whole issue of um, governance at the global level is very important. But let me make this um, f first point. You cannot talk global without talking local. And you can't talk local without talking regional. So in all of our global dialogues, our ability to bring it down to local perspective would make it efficient and effective in some of the actions that needs to be taken for the decisions to have an impact. Today we have a sensation in our world and that sensation is the little girl Greta. Greta took a global conversation and localized it. Um, she, climate change, climate action was something that many people were not talking about, especially at the local level, especially, especially those countries that were not impacted in ways that their livelihood were threatened. She took it and said, you, hey, you're not paying attention to this. Let's talk about it. If we bring the whole conversation around weapons governance at the local level, this is something that should have been happening decades ago. The brunt of every war, the brunt of the increase in proliferation in arms impacts communities in ways that we can never describe. So I think if we were starting that, com and it's not that people at community levels have not been talking about it, it's just that there's something about weapons conversation that once it gets on the table, people all of a sudden begin to look for experts to have a conversation. I think while it's important to have experts, it's also important to have local people. It's also important to have regional actors bringing all of these voices together to say, how is this impacting you? How is this impacting your national um, diet, um, politics? And this is how it's impacting the world. How can we now find solutions to these problems? So it's not something that we can over understate or overstate. It's something that is a necessity for the prevention of conflict and for global peace. Well, the psychological impact of weapons in communities is something that you, especially from my, from my experience or my community, we've lived through war. Um, when I was growing up, you rarely saw guns in the Liberian communities. The soldiers and police who used to move about did not carry arms every day. We saw that increasing after the coup in 1980. The more guns that our communities saw, the more unsafe the communities begin, became. Eventually, the war came, and it has exacerbated that whole feeling of fear. After the war, there was disarmament. There was a kind of pullback of weapons in the community. All of a sudden, we're beginning to see a reemergence of heavily armed men and women. And once you see that, people begin to have conversations about fleeing, people begin to have conversations about safety, people become overly protected of their children, and people don't want to invest in anything sustainable. So an increase or the visibility of weapons in community leads to not just unsafe feelings mentally, but it leads to that whole thing of Little or no development is going to happen here because people do not want to invest in any kind of project that they will have to leave. So the psychological effect is that once people see guns, oh, war is imminent because we've lived it. And the way they say it in our local context is that if snake has bitten you before, if you see a worm, you start to run. And that's, that's, that's how the minds of people are now disturbed when they see guns in the community. I think one of the key things that could come out of this dialogue, um, this new shape forum on weapons governance, is that first, looking at weapons governance from a collaborative perspective, that's the first thing. Secondly, um, really putting out there the dangers that weapons continue to have on our communities. Um, early, uh, when you look at the world today, we constantly look at things or pay attention to things that are trending. So what is trending in our world today? 
climate action, climate change. It gives people the impression that wars are no longer fighting or law, wars are no longer important. I think what did co this conference could do is to be persistent about the message of how weapons are still dangerous and how we can use all of this attention around climate action, around the sustainable development goals to say, hey, if we do not deal with all of these armed treaties and these nuclear declarations that governments are pulling out of, we will find ourselves at a place where we're going to have more than a world that is, you know, destroyed by climate action is going to be even be destroyed before 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago if we have a nuclear attack. So I think that conversation should be sustained and not just kept here in Geneva.